Oh, jeez. Good morning, I hope you guys are having a great day. We're going to do something today. We're going to be designing a costume. One of the things you see on our channel a lot is we like to wear costumes. We like to do little costume videos. And if you stay tuned for the end of this video and you're paying close attention, you are going to see some sneak previews for some costumes for some movies coming up. We roll a montage. Here's some of our costumes that we've done. a movie, either a YouTube video or a Hollywood video, some of the things you don't think about is the behind the scenes of these videos. Okay, so we're going to use the skeleton as a thing, so we'll bring it up. Bring it up. And obviously, since this video is about costumes, what I mean by behind the scenes is the work that goes into designing the costumes that your characters are going to wear. What the character wears tells you a lot about who they are without having to say it. For example, if your character is got worn and tattered clothes with tears in it, it may tell you a little bit about the history of that character, whereas if he's wearing a fancy suit and nice top hat, it might give you a little insight into his social standings. So what we're going to do today is we're going to design a costume and I'm going to give you some tips and pointers, things to think about when designing your own costume. Tip number one, consider your purpose. What are you going to be doing with your costume? A lot of people when they start to design their costumes are thinking something along the lines of Halloween. We're going to go out to a party or into the neighborhood or something and we need a costume that we can wear out. Or maybe you're going to a Comic Con and you want to wear something that's going to really impress. Or maybe you're making a video for YouTube and you just need something that's gonna look good on camera. So consider your purpose. What are you doing a costume for? Once you know what your event is, choose your character. This is one of the fun parts because you get to think, oh, I can be anybody that I want to be. Who would you want to be? You want to be Darth Vader from Star Wars, or you want to be Indiana Jones, or you're going to be a Transformer, or something exciting that you want to do to show off, you know, a little bit of you, a little bit of your costume skills, but just something you can have fun in, have fun with. So choose your character. For the purpose of this video, I have chosen a character by my favorite author, H. Ryder Haggard. He has written some stories about a character named Alan Quatermain who explores in Africa. Anyway, this character speaks to me, so I have decided to cosplay him. So what I'm going to do is find out as much as I can about the character. Now before I get carried away, with the costume design, I need to decide what I'm willing to put into it. Am I looking for something hard or something easy? How much time do I have before my event that I can spend creating, designing? If I have to have it by tomorrow night, obviously I can't order a bunch of things online or start painting projects or things like that, so I'd have to find something I can more throw together. But if I've got more time, if I've got a month or two months coming out, maybe I'd want to spend time building something, painting something, 
making something out of anything, really. So think about what you're willing to put into it. For the sake of this video, let's just say I have till the end of the video to put together a costume. So let's work with what we can. What I want to do now is I want to look at artwork. What's been done before? What have other people imagined for my character? You know, watch the movies, read the books, look at the pictures that people have drawn, the uh, fan art that you'll find online. So for my character, sometimes it's gonna be book covers, maybe it's gonna be drawings that people have done, or maybe it's gonna be from a movie that I saw. Or maybe I'll just mix and match things that I've seen and put together something completely original. And of course, try things out, experiment with them. Decide, you know, if you wanna copy something exactly, go ahead and try it. Be honest, who wore it better? Maybe you like it, or maybe there's elements you can take from it. Whatever it is you end up doing, just study a little bit and decide what you're willing to put into it. How are you gonna make it your own? So next is copy, adjust, or redesign. I've looked at the artwork that I have available to me on my character, and there is quite a broad spectrum here. Nobody really has a definitive thing. Well, now, what I've read about the character in the books is pretty open to interpretation. Um, at some points, it's noted that he's wearing a vest. At some points, he's wearing a coat. So, really, I'm going to decide what I see in the character as I read the book. The author didn't really take the time to lay out everything he was wearing, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that in my costume design. And next I've got make or buy. I don't have time to buy, nothing's gonna come in time, so I really don't have time to make either. Again, you know, consider your purpose and think about how much time you have, how much effort you're willing to put into it. And when it comes down to make or buy, maybe you've got the time, maybe you don't. I don't have the time because what, we've got a couple minutes left here. So what I'm going to do is piece together my costume from pieces of clothing I have laying around. I have a few extra costume pieces, so I'm gonna just build it from that and see what we come up with. Next is showy versus practical. What do we need it for? Are we doing a video where you don't really have to do too much with it? Or do you have to wear it somewhere where you'll be stuck in it all day? So I'm not necessarily talking about moving parts or anything, but if it's a hot summer day and you've got a big winter coat on, is that really practical? Mm, no, it's pretty showy, but it won't last you that long. Or other way around, maybe it's a winter day and there's just not enough to your costume to keep you warm. So showy versus practical, just make sure you're going to uh, be able to use it for what you're doing. A lot of things will work great on camera that won't work great out in public and the other way around. Also, there's staying in your budget. Now, this can be a hard one because it's really easy to, you know, just buy things online. Um, what you need to do is you need to decide how much money you're gonna spend. And when you could say, oh, well, I can just buy the costume on the internet, you know, I'll just piece it together. And you know what? Even Hollywood tries to avoid spending money on costumes because you can spend so much so easily. A lot of costumes in Hollywood are actually reused or pieced together from costume departments. Just do your best to assess your needs and try not to spend you know what, spend as little as you can, if possible. Um, I'm not gonna spend anything today. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna piece it together from things that I have. Um, but if you really need a specific piece, you know, decide what's reasonable before you just start spending that money. If you're going to be spending money on a costume, what kind of use are you gonna get out of it? Are you gonna get your money's worth? Or, you know, are you going to be able to resell it for a reasonable amount when you're done with it? Um, 
When I buy a costume prop for one of our movies, I try to think, can I get at least three videos out of this piece? A lot of times in my videos, you're gonna see the same coat go by, or the same hat, or the same sword. You know, your accessories especially, it's so easy to just buy new, buy new, buy new. But think about it, and try to make things work for other things in other places. So you've been staring at my mannequin long enough, let's put some clothes on it. What we're going to do is design our base costume. Before we start adding all the fancy gadgets and things like that, what is our character wearing? My character, Alan Quaterman, is often pictured as like an African safari style character where he's got the tan and khaki and the safari helmet, um, things like that. I mean, overall, he's a big game hunter, so that that works for the character, but can we spice it up a little bit? Um, how do we make it not just showy, but practical? For the pants, what I like to use is I have a pair of Dickies that they don't have any of the extra pockets or anything like that. In fact, they're very plain, they're khaki, and they work for quite a few characters, everything from Western to Pirate. They'll definitely work for a safari style character. So we'll go ahead and use these pants right here. For shirts, I would prefer to use a long sleeve shirt, um, but I don't have one in a darker style or even wider. I just don't have a lot of long sleeve shirts. So what I've got is I pulled two vaguely khaki shirts. Um, one is a Wrangler that's just got, you know, it's just got a lot of buttons on it, so I don't necessarily care for all the buttons. And it's the same color as the pants. I don't want them totally monotone. So I've got this Old Navy shirt that's kind of like, um, I don't know, ship sail. Uh, not a pure white, more of a brownish white, but it offsets the uh, pants a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And while you're putting it together, you can think about things like, you know, how am I doing? Am I staying within my budget? Obviously I am, because so far these are just some of my regular clothes, so doing okay there. Showy versus practical. Um, it's gonna be very much practical for me. Uh, it'll work out great. And a little bit of flair at the end, but it'll be practical flair. Next up, what we have is the, the vest. The author does mention a couple times that he checked his vest. Now, here's where we can think about some of the artwork we've seen. Um, some of the characters have depicted him as having different kinds of vests. Um, for example, Sean Connery's character in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he's got a leather vest on, which looks really cool, but Africa's really hot, so I don't see people wearing too many leather vests. Um, so we're gonna go with some kind of material. Now, I do have this double-breasted gentleman's vest that I like to wear for a lot of my characters, but this is definitely a little too fancy for a big game hunter style character. But while I've got this up, let me show you. A lot of these vests, they'll have the nice material on the front, but the back is just gonna be like a cheap satin cloth style, doesn't match the rest of it. And I understand that's great for suits and things like that, but again, we're thinking big game hunter style. We're gonna go with something a little more practical for him. What I've got is this vest right here, which is a little bit warmer. It's a little heavier material made of wool or something like that, but um, it wears really well, feels nice, fits me. That's always important and has got some older style buttons in the front that I think look good. Plus it's got some pockets, so the fact that the character reached into his pocket to get something, this will work out. This will work out great, you know, and not just from a 180 style perspective, but we're going 360 on this one, so let's get this on the mannequin. There. Now I've got them all buttoned up, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty of times where it was just a hot enough day that he would, you know, either have the top of his shirt unbuttoned or the vest just hanging down by his sides. You know, it wasn't always prim and proper in the middle of the desert. But while we're on that note, um, 
There were times in the stories when he would find himself on top of high mountains that were just snowy and cold and they had to wear their big coats. So if you've watched the channel long enough, you'll have seen this coat many a time. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put it on our character for, you know, just something he has on those days when it's cold. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the boots. This is to be the last thing as part of our base costume that we're going to come up with is shoes can be tricky in general. Now I've selected boots for my character um, and when you're thinking about it, sometimes you're like, oh, it's my feet. Nobody's going to be looking at my feet. But you know what? A lot of costume people are looking at the entire costume. So do the best you can to come up with something that's really going to fit in with your character. When I think boots for my character, um, it would be easy and sometimes passable to get away with just standard cowboy boots, right? You could just wear a pair of cowboy boots. They'll be boots so no one will notice that they're totally out of character. But maybe they're not best for being in Africa and you know, 18 something. An easy way to get out of the cowboy boot situation is a pair of just black rain boots or muck boots. These will put you more in the uh, fantasy category for sure. They're just plain, they're black, and they'll fit into anything. So you could get these to pass for anything as well. However, I happen to own a pair of fantasy boots that I like to use for quite a few of my characters. Um, I'll give you a closer look at these, but these are great for everything from cowboys to pirates to my a Rider Haggard character. So now I've got my base costume together and it's time to talk about the last thing, accessories. Now with accessories, this is another time you're gonna have to think about practical versus, you know, maybe what's allowed. If you're going to a Comic-Con, a lot of times you gotta check and see, you know, what kind of things they allow you to carry around, or maybe just things that are just loose on your person aren't necessarily a good idea, but if you're doing a film, maybe you do want that loose article. For example, my character, usually carries a revolver with him. Now, a lot of times events, functions, comic cons don't allow you to have a gun prop, um, but I'll show you a good way to make it seem like you have one without actually having one so it looks good for the costume. Okay, so we'll actually start by talking about the revolver. Um, now, it might be easy to throw on a six shooter, right? Oh, everybody likes to cowboy up, put their six shooter on, strap it on, you know? Hey, carries the revolver, looks good. Um, also very cowboy, so it wouldn't really work for my character in Africa. Um, and at the same time, um, pretty obvious, there's a gun right there. Um, now, I know that this is a fake gun, but a lot of people don't know that. So could really create a problem if I was to take this to something like a Comic-Con. So let's do something a little bit different. Something that would better fit the character. I've got a leather holster here. Now this is one of those cover holsters because you know, maybe the sand's blowing or it's pouring rain, you don't want to get your gun wet. So he would wear something more along these lines. And at the same time, it's got that flap that I don't actually have a gun in this and that is great for taking out because you can see no gun, just a really nice holster, but for pictures or something like that, looks great. Could be, you know, could be anything, could be, works great for my purposes, let's say that. So we're going to put this on a belt and just start a belt for the kind of things that he might be carrying. And speaking of carrying. Um, we don't necessarily know that he had gloves, but a pair of black costume gloves tend to go great for any character. I mean, he's a shooter, we know he's a big game hunter, so he's probably got his shooting gloves, or just, he's an explorer, maybe he's got a pair of gloves to, anyway, I threw a pair of gloves in there because these black ones, they just look great. They're, there's nothing to them, but they look great on camera or in person, they, they look great. So for the rest of the belt, um, 
he's a big game hunter, right? So he needs to carry his bullets somehow. I've got some uh, some of these leather bullet pouches that you know they'll they'll do pretty good on his uh, on his belt, I think. Also, I've got an antique style compass and a little leather pouch um, compass. Yeah, you know, explorers. I would think they would carry a compass, and because of the leather pouch, it'll fit well with the with the belt stuff. Also, a hunting knife in a leather pouch. Um, I think, yeah, I probably, you know, carried a knife or something, again, with the leather. And then finally, I've got one of these old brass telescopes with the leather band around it. So, you know, he's an explorer. Look around, see what there is to see. Um, that won't necessarily go onto a belt, but it, you know, something he might carry that would be a fun prop for, you know, picture ops or something like that. So go ahead and throw that in one of the bolt pockets. What about a hat? A hat would look great on this. Now I could just go without a hat, um, let my hair down. You guys know I have long hair. Uh, something that is noted in the books was, he says when he was younger, he had shorter hair, but now that he's older, he has longer hair. So I could get away with just having my hair down, but I want to put a hat on. So to put a hat on it, let's go ahead and put a head on my mannequin here to show a hat. Now, like a lot of people have showed before, they do the, uh, you know, British style safari helmet. Um, feel like this guy would walk out of the woods and say, Dr. Livingston, I presume? But that really doesn't define the character I'm trying to build, so I think I'll just go with the old. <sighs> I like it. And next is try it out. Let's put it on, see how we like it. Move around a little bit, make sure it's practical for what we're doing, and uh, make sure it fits. Um, so let's see how we did here. And of course, once you got it all together, if you're happy with what you came up with, final thing, show it off. That's what I've got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something from it. Let me know in the comments, what kind of costumes have you guys tried and loved? Or what kind of costumes have you guys tried and not loved? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day and we will see you next time.